Hello, I'm Nick Kruger. I'm going to be talking about cervical traction, really the absolute core of cervical traction, and hopefully after this you'll have a clear understanding of how to do what is really a very simple procedure and very safe. Indications for traction are uh, any unstable fractures or dislocations in the neck. So, C1, C2 rotatory subluxation, displaced odontoid pig fractures, hand wounds fractures, and unstable subaxial cervical fractures, which are malaligned, these need traction. The traction is to provide alignment only. With facet dislocations, traction is to provide uh, an active reduction process, which is, which is very different. When you're just maintaining alignment, you're only putting in 5 kilograms in line of the neck, and it really allows you to take off the cervical collar, because this can cause pressure sores in the neck, and the patient can't lie on a collar in bed. Active reduction process is a series of sequentially increasing weights with flexion to reduce the dislocation. An analogy of maintaining alignment with traction is putting a fractured femur into Thomas splint, which maintains alignment of the bone. Active reduction process in the neck is equivalent to reducing a dislocated hip or a dislocated knee, where one has an actual reduction process. So the diagnosis of dislocation is made in simple x-rays. Don't forget to know your radiological lines. You can quite see, clearly see how the anterior body line is disrupted. There's a step. The posterior body line is disrupted. The spinal and lamina line, which is this line here, has got a step. And the lines of convergence, the line of convergence going through this virtual body, is clearly angulated from this line here. So there's a, there's a gap there as well. Um, Looking at this inferior vertebra, there are the two facet joints nicely superimposed, and the one above it is a separation between the joints. This is a so called bow tie, um, and this facet tip here has clearly jumped over. Because there's still some facet joint and continuity here at the back, this is a unifacet dislocation. X ray uh, is enough to make a diagnosis, you don't need a CT, but obviously, you can't see the area down here. Uh, C7 T1 or the x-ray is poor, the patient might have a short fat neck, then the CT scan will help you uh, decide. In a nutshell, reduction is started with 5 kilograms and you take a check x-ray. The reason for waiting is to uh, make sure that you don't have over distraction when you initially put in 5 kilograms. Start to increase with flexion once you've done a check x-ray and no more than 20 to 30 degrees. Flexion aids the reduction process and I'll show you in a second why. Um, so once you've achieved flexion, you start to increase with 5 kilograms every 5 minutes. There are many different uh, schedules which you can which you might have read. Um, there's, there's one schedule which says start at 10 pounds to the head and 5 per level um, in our metric, so you try and convert it to kilograms, or it becomes very confusing. This is an algorithm I've designed, which is safe and very easy to remember. 5 kilograms, flexion 20 to 30 degrees, increase 5 kilograms every 5 minutes. You want to increase weight until you see the facets are perched or tip to tip. You don't want to go over 40 kilograms. The, the Cairns calipers can go to 60 kilograms, I've done it, but in general 40 kilograms you should have achieved most of your reduction by then. Obviously every time you add 5 kilograms, do a quick neuro check and x-rays every time you add weights. Um, so here's a neck which is dislocated, we can see um, a step there, the two facets have jumped there. So this is a this is the point of flexing the neck, the neck. Because of the anterior uh, longitudinal ligament and the muscle structures, it's like a green stick fracture in a child. If you simply put in traction, uh, this acts as a tether, and you can't actually pull any harder. The facets won't disimpact because it's held by the anterior tether. 
So if you flex a neck, as such, it gives the anterior tether some slack and allows you to disimpact the facet joints. So that's why it's important to flex a neck when you are putting in traction. And 20 to 30 degrees um, is perfectly fine. Once you've achieved reduction, obviously you can um, drop the head back in extension. Uh, that's why we use a double mattress. And then you need to reduce the weight as such down to 5 kilograms of maintenance traction. So once reduction achieved, extend the spine, drop the weight down to 5 kilograms, do a check x-ray to confirm you have a still got reduction. As a schematic of the reduction process, the patient is lying on a double mattress. The reason for double mattress is so you can extend the head, it's not for pressure sores. A swan neck pulley and starting of 5 kilograms, you can see here what's happening with the neck. We will now flex the neck to 20 to 30 degrees, which gives us a bit of slack in the anterior um, check rein. And then we take a check x-ray, 5 minutes, near a check, start increasing weight. Increase weight sequentially. Um, as you can see here, to a maximum of about 40 kilograms. You should pretty much start have most reductions achieved by 35 kilograms. Once we see our facets are disimpacted, you can call them pushed or tip to tip or aligned. We know that if we drop the head, the, the facet will re-establish its, um, its normal articulation and, and, and dislocate. Extend the neck by dropping a swan neck pulley. And our facets should be nicely aligned. We still under all, all the, the, the weight you used. Um, take a check x-ray. And if it's all good, you can reduce the weight to 5 kilograms. And this is your sort of maintenance weight. Endpoints of cervical traction reduction are reduction. Very occasionally, the patient may have worsening neurological status. Don't forget that the incidence of making a patient permanently worse is less than 1%. That is established over 1,600 consecutive cases. So it's extremely rare to have neurological deterioration. Um, as I say, it's less than 1%. If you start seeing over distraction on the x-rays, maybe it has been a catastrophic um, disruption of the ligaments from the injury, not from what you've done, um, and it may be an indication to stop increasing traction. Also, if you achieve your target weight, 35 to 40 kilograms, and you still haven't got any reduction, that's, that's an end point. You can't, there's no point in carrying on. Sometimes a patient's got a fractured facet or, or something, and that may prevent reduction. I'll discuss what to do with failed reduction in a second. So here's an overview of cervical traction. Starting reduction, 5 kilograms neuro check. Flex to 20 to 30 degrees. Start increasing weights. Okay. Remember, every time you add a weight, 5 kilograms every 5 minutes. Extra neuro check. Around about here, your target, target sort of goal we're trying to get to, 35 to 45 kilograms. You want to see the facets becoming tip to tip. If you get that, you can extend the neck, drop down to maintenance weight, the neck is reduced. Um, once reduction is completed, do a check x-ray, a final neuro check. The patient is then ready for surgery. Okay, don't forget you've now decompressed the canal. It doesn't have to be emergency surgery, it can be at the next available operating list. Um, the patient can go for an MRI and surgical stabilization uh, and as an as a urgent case, but not an emergency. It can happen during the week and um, your job has been done. Fail reduction, this may occur occasionally. So if you are unlucky and you the, the less, one, less than 1% you get neurological deterioration, um, uh, you just 
the bought attraction. Basically, um, reduce the weights down to 5 kilograms or even take them off, reply the collar. If the pins slip, occasionally you, you might find you haven't penetrated the outer table of a skull correctly. Um, in a case, just take the weights off, reapply the pins properly. If you achieve your maximum weight, 40 or 45 kilograms, and the neck is still not reduced, then and, and you also manage to put the patient in adequate flexion, no more than 30 degrees, you can say you've failed reduction and the neck is irreducible. Once again, um, you just align the neck again, traction in alignment of the neck, weights of 5 kilograms, maintenance weights, um, check the neurology, and you then need to go along with a failed reduction algorithm, which will be the next slide. You may also find that you, you know, as a clinician, you're uncomfortable to add more weight. Um, the patient may be you know, not adequately analgesed. Um, you know, it's perfectly fine if, if you feel uncomfortable, you're not happy to do it, and there's a, there's a reason for it to abandon the procedure. But a lot of this is, you know, it's, it's, it's so infrequently done, but you may be called upon it in your career to do it. You can actually save someone's cord. Don't forget, if someone's got a complete dislocation of the neck and they're Asia A, they have no motor, no sensory um, function, you've got nothing to lose. It's, you know, this patient cannot be weighed worse. So in that situation, I urge you at all times to really try and reduce the neck. You've got a very good chance of allowing this patient to walk again if they've had a low energy dislocation, like a rugby injury or guys feeling around if they're drunk. Um, so in the scenario when the patient's got normal neurology and you need to reduce the neck, um, you know, it can, it can, one can sometimes feel uncomfortable, but bearing in mind, it's a very safe procedure because the patient's awake, they are monitoring the spinal cord function for you, um, and, and because that's a very safe procedure. This is my algorithm for the failed reduction. So if you have pin slippage, um, remove the weight, reapply the pins to make sure you penetrate the outer table of the skull, recommence traction. If you achieve your maximum weight, 40 kilograms, um, confirm you have adequate flexion, if the patient is still unreduced, then you remove your weights. You may decide to abandon procedure, or the most importantly, if the patient has neurological deterioration, then you abandon the procedure, remove the weights, apply the collar, maintain cord perfusion, so keep your mean blood pressure over 85 millimeters, maintain SATs with oxygen, send the patient for an urgent MRI, and then they need a surgical open reduction. Hopefully this has all made sense. Um, we can we can discuss any um, any further uncertainties on the on the video chat, uh, which will be arranged at a given time. Don't forget the final step in the process is the patient needs surgical stabilisation because the dislocation is a purely um, soft tissue injury to the disc and ligaments. Uh, there remains a substantial risk of re-dislocation if you don't do surgical fusion. But the fusion can happen um, at a semi-elective basis. The spinal cord has been decompressed because of spinal realignment. Um, we, we, we normally choose to do a simple anterior fusion of the plate. We, we, we scratch out the disc and put in some bone graft there so you get a permanent fusion between those two bones. And the patient can return back to normal function uh, depend, depending on the cord injury and cord recovery. Thank you.